Right, I'm live. The question is, I can see I'm live, I can see my face, uh, whether or not there's actually sound with this, I don't know. I'm just having to hope I'm not very good at this kind of thing. Um, I'd like to introduce you to my new glasses. Also, um, the reason I'm actually giving this little live thing now is because of the talk and tour that I'm doing later uh, at the end of April and April the 26th a Chubra estate in Staffordshire, which starts at 11 in the morning, will be about three hours long, going around sites at Chubra estate, which are all strangely connected with the legend of the Holy Grail. In fact, there are more things at, on the Chubra estate to do with the Grail than almost any other place. I mean, I'm not saying they're all genuine, but they did play a part in my search to find the world's most famous relic, the, the, the Holy Grail or the Grail. Um, now, just to, some people have been saying to me that I'd put up a load of quotes from press, uh, press quotes up. What, what was all this about? How did everybody know about this? Well, my discovery was made back in the mid-90s, early to mid-90s. Um, and I found a cup. Hello, Russell, can you actually hear me? Here's my voice going live. I can see myself, but I don't know if I can be heard. Hello, Jasmine. Can I be heard? Can you hear me? Jasmine, can you actually hear me? Maybe I can't be heard. Hmm. Um, oh, yes, I can. Oh, wonderful. Hello. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, so my talk, um, so on the 26th of April, I'm giving this t uh, tour and talk of Shugborough Estate at, just on the outskirts of Stafford that's uh, I have many connections with the Grail legend, different versions of the Grail legend. Not to say I'm not saying they're all true, but certainly some of it tied up with my search for the Grail. Now, my book about that came out in the mid 90s. It was called, imaginatively, The Search for the Grail. It was then republished later in America under the title The Chalice of Magdalene, which made it less obvious what it was about. But the Americans decide to publish under a different titles very often, and that's what happened. Um, so this book's been selling for years. It was it was pretty much a bestseller when it came out back in the 1990s, and it got massive amounts of publicity. Just telling you about this for not just to show off, which I am, also to say that I used to be somebody, which I still am, but also uh, I think it's quite fascinating. When this uh, when when I found this uh, this this cup, I mean I won't go into all how it was found now. You can come along on the talk to find that out or read the book. Uh, but there you go, Daily Mail, how do I, they did a whole page on it, um, there's a picture of it, there's me and my, it's all backwards, it's like, you think you're looking in a mirror but you're not, right, there's my silly head, that's what I looked like back there, I even had a tie, respectable man, um, the Daily Mail, here's another one that came out, actual, the, uh, the Independent, remember, that's a sensible newspaper, hold on, can you see it, it's trying to, Trying to do things opposite way around in a in this rather than a mirror is awkward. Anyway, there's me again. No, no the other side. Um, and anyway, there was loads of publicity. That's just a couple of them. It's like all over the place. Got masses of publicity. That man finds Gretel. Um, eventually, the story ended up in the European newspaper. Now it doesn't exist anymore, um, but that was a magazine then, which uh, was published throughout Europe. There is my cup there that well at least the one that I located that I said was the original grail some guy in Italy this guy who was head head of some sort of local group there he claimed that his one that he's holding was the real one now such controversy did that start all over the place that um, the um, Ameri uh, an Italian journalist sort of like got in touch with the Vatican to say you know which one of these is the real one and eventually, I mean, this it was particularly in the Catholic world, in, in, in Spain, Italy and so forth, there was modes of publicity about all this. And uh, also at the same time, various churches, cathedrals, abbeys throughout the world came forward and saying, no, 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 these guys haven't got a grail. We've got it. We've got it. And there were dozens came, you know, uh, people 
uh, candidates for a holy grail. And so eventually the Vatican said His Holiness is considering these various claims and he will announce his uh, his conclusions at the end of the week. Now, it seems a bit quick, but anyway, I assume he met, he read my book. That was Pope John Paul II, Polish man. My book was published in, Pol published in Polish, so perhaps he read that. Anyway, at the end of the week, he comes out on the balcony and he gives his uh, various, whatever he does when he does that, uh, talks to the crowd and so on. And amongst this, he made the sort of statement that none of the grails were the real one because they've got it in the Vatican. Now, that was the end of the story. I mean, I had loads of journalists come to me and say, what do you know about it being in the Vatican? I said, I have never heard them say that before. And no one's ever heard them say it since. Um, so... Uh, that he even got the Pope involved. The, the other interesting thing about that article in the European uh, newspaper is that newspaper was actually owned by the Barclay brothers, who were a business, a uh, couple of brothers owned various business enterprises. And one of the things they owned was a golfing resort in Hawkstone Park in, uh, in Shropshire, which, where a whole series of clues were there, which I followed, to go in search of the Grail. They were so happy about all this, that, that it might promote their golfing resort, that they ordered the whole area to be, um, to, to be sort of um, you know, fenced off and for a grotto to be there. They even invited me down to, uh, to London to go for a meal at one of their hotels, the Howard Hotel, very posh business. And I'm thinking, they were saying, so, so what, can, we, can we have this? Can we maybe buy it and put it up? I said, no, 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 no. A, it's on loan to me and B, um, th th this isn't what you think. The Catholic world isn't going to come round and, and start because they were hoping they could, you know, be like Lourdes and their place would be uh, open to people paying to get in, I think. But anyway, I said, no, 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 it's, it's nothing like that. This is something, it's just my theory. There's many other people, the church certainly doesn't agree. Anyway, eventually they lost interest in that. The place was half finished, half converted into a shrine. So they then left it up to the manager of the hotel to sort it out. And eventually what became of this was the grotto, if anybody's been there, at Hawkstone Park, which you can go around, and it ended up in them making a nature trail, basically. So that, that came from it too. But um, the, the story, it, it got low, I mean, publicity all over the place. Again, I'm showing off, but it does show just how much, how seriously this was taken. Here are some of the press cuttings over the years. Well, at the time, actually, within a couple of weeks. So it just, this, this is mainly, just, I think these are the ones from all local newspapers in Britain. Um, and, 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 it, and it goes on. So there's loads of this, and it eventually got so much publicity that it featured in Newsweek, which is like the world's leading magazine at the time. If you want to see that, just type into the, you know, into Google um, Newsweek, Graham Phillips, Grail, and you can see the uh, archived article online. <laughs> They're not very complimentary about me. They basically think I'm a nutter, but all publicity is good publicity, they say. And, um, oh, there, there's been many documentaries about it over the years, which I think you've probably seen. There was one by Tony Robinson, who didn't believe it was a real one, but thought it was fascinating. Nevertheless, there was, um, uh, th there's been all sorts of documentaries about it, and it's featured on things like The Unexplained and even Ancient Aliens. Um, not, not that I actually didn't think there's any alien connection. But what I'm trying to do, really, is to plug the fact that on the 26th of April, uh, starting at 11 o'clock in the morning, um, there is this like three hour tour of Shugbro Estate near Staffordshire, which has got many associations with the Grail. I'll be telling the story of my search for the Grail, and I actually hope, if I can get security arranged, to have it with me. Um, <clears throat> the cup that um, I believe was the original Holy Grail. So anyway, that's about it. Let's have a look what people have been saying. Uh, Paolo going to book this tomorrow when I get paid. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you very much. Have the day of the week already sorted. So, yeah, it's a Friday. We couldn't do them at the weekend. Uh, Shugbra Estate don't let you do these tours at the weekend because it's too crowded. Um, Colin, it was probably the first of your books that I read. Oh, wow. Yes, I, I, it was the first one I did. I'd written books before that with Martin Keatman. This was the first one I just did on my own. So, uh, yeah. Morning all, hello Tony, 
So there you go. Anyway, I shall, uh, this seems to have gone off without a hitch, without it breaking down or anything. So anyway, for those who come along, hope to see you there. Those who can't make it, all the best. Just keep watching my Facebook and see everything I say and see what I get up to. Okay then, bye for now.